What's up guys? Josh here with PlanetChinchilla.com. Welcome back to the channel. So a little bit of story time for you guys here on this video. It is now end of October going into November and I, I live in Illinois, central United States. And listen, I get it. The temperatures, they vary all the time here. We're used to it. We get negative 30 degrees and then it's 70 degrees. That's just a typical winter, fall, summer, spring, doesn't matter. But <laughs> the other day it got colder than usual, so I turned off the heat in the house, so the temperature dropped, um, which also, I mean, if the heat's not on and the air's not on, if it gets hot again, and you're kind of comfortable with the temperature as a human being in your home, you might not adjust it if the temperature outside changes. And then I forgot I was in Illinois, and it is going to be coming up in a few days, it's getting back up to 80 degrees. So almost a 50 degree swing in a matter of 48 hours. If you think I'm rambling or this is just complete baloney why I'm talking about this, it's not. It's all about her. So when I woke up dripping in sweat because I had not adjusted the temperature in my home, I immediately thought to myself like, uh-oh, I need to go check what the temp is and get this place cooling down so that she was okay. And if you still think I'm rambling, I kind of am at this point, but it was time to clean her cage yet again. That's why all of her stuff's out of here. I'm actually gonna get ready to take her to a different room, play with her, get the fleece being washed, etc. But because of what happened with this whole temperature thing, I thought I'd make a quick video about heat stroke and just heat issues for chinchillas. Yes, I'm already aware that I have a video on this channel about the ideal temperatures for chinchillas. However, those are two completely different things. Knowing what temperature they should be at is one thing, but avoiding heat issues and heat stroke altogether is a whole new topic. So that is what this video is all about and we're starting right now. And guys, of course, if you are a new chinchilla owner or you've owned one for a while and you just have fun watching useful videos about chinchillas, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's what this is all about, helping you guys with your chinchillas, having some fun while we're doing it and answering a lot of common questions. So again, subsi subscribe, sub subscribe to the channel down below and let's go ahead and start diving into the video. So guys, apparently I just have no tolerance for even moderate temperatures inside of a house. Everything was fine, no need to worry. The house was like 68 degrees. <laughs> Everything was perfectly fine, but in my head I obviously still wanted to check it, make sure she was okay. Even though for the past like five days, I don't know what it is, every time I move this cage up here, she no longer wants to be social with me anymore come out and play. But heat stroke is still a very important thing to understand about a chinchilla. I would actually say it's probably one of the most common ways a chinchilla either falls ill or sadly passes away is because of something heat related. In a nutshell guys, a chinchilla just struggles with high temperatures or high humidity. A lot of this is just from their entire history since existence. They come from a mild temperature region of the world with low precipitation and low humidity levels so that coupled in with their dense fur their inability to sweat makes overheating a very real concern and something you have to avoid so besides only worrying about those ideal temperatures that i have in the other video that's just the basics the bottom line you have to do it but there are other things that you should be aware of as well to make sure you never have an issue with heat stroke, which I'm gonna cover a few of those right now for you. Number one, guys, is traveling with them in a travel carrier and they get stressed. So traveling is always something that can be relatively dangerous and stressful for a chinchilla. But if you do, make sure you're keeping those temperature guidelines in check. Make sure that they're remaining as stress-free as possible. Make sure that the AC is on in the vehicle. Make sure it's a breathable cage that they are in during that travel. That is one of the common ways a chinchilla can overheat or get highly stressed in a situation like that. Number two is don't buy accessories that can cause overheating. One of the most common ones is those hamster balls, which, hold on one second, some people use these in an okay fashion, which is, I've seen it used where you don't have a top on it and they are vented. 
it's almost kind of like just an accessory that's hanging in the cage that they can pass in and out of kind of like a hammock but still plastic but they shouldn't even have plastic in the cage to begin with so i would avoid them because that is one overheating mechanism and then using a hammock that's not breathable or that they can't get in and out from two directions can also be a way that they overheat as you can see the purple hammock in this cage here above me it goes in one side out the other she really doesn't use it a ton anyways i know a lot of chinchillas do but that is another thing to keep in mind about a chinchilla and potentially overheating number three is super important which is chinchilla proofing a room it's not the room that makes them overheat it's when it's not proofed and they can get somewhere else where they overheat such as under a bed in between furniture somewhere where they're scared to come out especially right after you first adopt them overheating could easily happen in that situation chinchilla proof the room or use a playpen i will put a link in the description below for a playpen that i recommend it will make a huge difference for you to feel stress-free about the overheating and all of the other dangers that come with not chinchilla proofing a room before you play and then guys of course you can be the one causing the overheating which typically happens when you don't know what you're doing and you're i don't even really know perfectly but chasing your chinchilla to get them back into the cage just trying to get them so you can go to bed back to where they need to be be careful with things like that that will a freak them out b hurt the bond and C can easily cause overheating. So always beware of that. And guys, if you think it is happening, a few of the quick ways that you can recognize it with a chinchilla is rapid breathing. That could be from stress or overheating. And then a lot of the times the inner part of their ears, the veins will dilate. So it's almost like their inner ear will turn red, which can indicate that they're overheating as well. Or panting, you know, common signs like that can indicate that they're getting too hot. If that's the situation, you need to cool them down. So using things like the Katie Chinchilla Granite Stones is one way to do it. Getting them back to a lower temperature is another way. But make sure that you're always paying attention, looking for signs of overheating, doing everything you can to avoid it. And if you need to, call your vet and get them the help that they need to make sure you and your chinchilla get the 15 years or more of bonding affection and why you adopted them in the first place and guys as always chili and i appreciate you stopping by the channel hopefully this was somewhat helpful it was kind of a spur of the moment video but nonetheless we thought it was important to cover it again if you find this kind of content helpful be sure to subscribe down below give us a thumbs up and be sure to come back every tuesday and thursday 8 a.m central for the newest videos again we appreciate you we appreciate all the subscribers if you have a video you want us to make, be sure to leave a comment down below. We're happy to do so. Otherwise, we will see you guys in the next video. Take care.